I, I'm going to talk today about my own um, engagement with um, Islam and um, science. Um, I am one of uh, a handful of seminary trained uh, graduates in the UK who are, who are also in the academy. I'm probably the only one who's actually, um, you know, who studies like bioethics, medicine and, and all that. Dr. Riaz is now, um, you know, in this field as well. Um, I initially got um, interested and influenced back in the uh, 1990s um, by reading uh, Maurice Bocaili's book, um, The Quran, The Science, um, The Quran, The Bible and Modern Science. I couldn't understand it. I was 13 when I read it, but it was the craze. Um, and it just, all I knew was that this book was proving that Islam is brilliant and, you know, the Bible is not. Um, <laughs> but um, but later on, um, I think the, the, the thing that really wooed me was um, Harun Yahya's book. You, know, you have to give praise where it's due. And not necessarily his his books on science, but actually his book on history, which is called the Perish Nation, um, that was fascinating because it was it was kind of um, you know telling us where exactly certain historical things that the Quran mentioned happened with you know high very high um, uh, photography, and that was the hook because that then captivated me. And then I went and looked at his book on the evolution de deception and the miracle in the eye and the miracle in so so many other things and that was kind of like my mission i compared the kind of studies we were we were stu studying in darulum and this is not a critique but i ashari theology mu'tazili theology talking about the nature of god and whether the the um, attributes of god are within him or outside him i felt that i couldn't really relate to that i mean it, I was top student. I used to come first every time, but I still thought that how can I practically, um, you know, use that? And I did a, I did an experiment um, to see whether people understand it, and I used it on my mother, uh, Ashari theology, and I actually made her cry because she thought that she turned into a kafir, because. <clears throat> but then I had to apologize to her afterwards. Um, but I realized that it's not working. But Harun Yahya's kind of book was a waft of fresh air. It was relevant. It was things that people were talking about, and we can actually go and engage with people and debate with people. And then later on, found out that he wasn't all hunky dory. But anyway, <laughs> immediately after Darulum, I think I will have to thank uh, Dr. Fakad Rashid here. Um, he he invited me to a, a medical conference to talk about Islam and urine urine incontinence. I really didn't know what incontinence what was at that time. I'll confess to you now after twenty five years. Um, but that was fascinating because I saw these doctors, um, you know, talking about all of these problems, you know, related to medicine. And they were looking at the panel of ulama there. And I had no idea what they were talking about. I knew they were serious, but thank goodness for Dr. Rafakat and Mufti Zubair Butt because they know what, uh, what they were talking about. But I didn't. But it just kind of then I realized that I need to do more because if doctors, professionals are looking at us, ulama, then I need to go and um, kind of do something about it. Um, my PhD wasn't on this topic. It was a pure Hadith studies. But post-PhD, I um, went back to uh, Cardiff University and I worked with Sophie Gilly Ray on a project on Muslim chaplaincy. And we wrote the book, the first book ever on understanding Muslim chaplaincy. In there, again, I, I come across a lot of issues related to abortion, um, organ donation, palliative care, end of life. But... Um, after that project finished, um, I started working on fatwas, fatwas related to science and, and medicine. And there was one particular topic that I was really interested in, which was the debate over um, the prayer times in the UK. You know, when, when do you pray 15 degrees, 18 degrees? It was really fascinating because it was scientific. I went to the astronomy department in Cardiff University and kind of understood the, the science from them. And I published a paper on what I think was happening in the debate. If anybody wants to read the paper, it's called Is the British Weather Anti-Islamic? Okay. Um, <clears throat> 2013, uh, that's when the the, would, the Welsh government was discussing whether, um, you know, they should have the opt-out law. And there was a lot of consultation. And at that time, as an imam in the community, people started asking me all these uh, questions. You know, is organ donation permissible? If I was to donate my organs and the recipient was to uh, commit a sin, like watch pornography, 
would I be responsible for that? Would I be resurrected organless? Would my body feel, would my soul feel pain when I, uh, uh, you know, when my organs are being extracted? And I really didn't know the answer to those questions, uh, but I did know that this is going to be law uh, in Wales. And if it becomes law in Wales, then it's going to be law in England, you know, uh, sometimes uh, um, down the road. And I knew that they would need an expert. So I jumped onto the bandwagon and started researching that topic from January 2016. And I've been researching that topic ever since. Um, and I've become the expert in that topic. Um, I, to date, I've given many, many lectures. I've written 10 papers on different aspects of on organ transplantation and Islam. The latest one is an article, a book chapter published in Mahdiya's book um, that she edited on uh, the status of the soul and, and, and brain death. Currently, I'm working on a funded project on looking at Muslim religious professionals, ulama's understanding of organ transplantation law, the process, and fatwa, which is funded by um, the CIM, Center for Islam and Medicine. I've also published uh, other papers on aligning medical and Muslim morality and Islamic bioethical approach to applying rationing life-sustaining ventilators in COVID-19 pandemic era. Mouthful, but basically, can you take... Um, a, a, a life, a ventilator off somebody who's suffering from COVID-19 and give it to somebody else, which basically means that this person will die definitely, but the second person has a better prognosis, medical prognosis. So that was um, um, written, co-authored with Professor Asim Padella. Um, I am teaching modules on Islam and biomedical ethics. I used to teach, well, I teach a module called um, Islamic Ethics of Death, uh, Life and Death. Previously, it had a better name, but nobody understood it, so I had to um, change it. It was called God, Good and the Ugly, um, which was a pun on Clintus Woods, Good, Bad and the Ugly, but also a pun on the Euthyphorian Dilemma. But when I asked my students, do you know Clintus Wood? Nobody they just look up like, what am I talking about? So I had to change it to more boring ethics of life and death. Um, as far as supervision is concerned, um, I am supervising uh, seven PhDs uh, at the moment, but one is uh, one particular student, Muammar al Khalila, who I'm supervising with uh, Dr. Riaz on Ash'ari responses to ne New Age atheism. And what Muammar is basically doing is taking classical Ash'ari positions and trying to kind of uh, apply them uh, to modern problems. So to, there are two problems at the end uh, that he applies Ash'ari theology to. One is quantum mechanics and the multiverse theory, which is fascinating as a supervisor when I don't understand it, um, but uh, but also exotheology, exotheology, um, aliens, uh, etc., and using Ashwari Kalam. I am also supervising um, a another PhD thesis with uh, Molana Dr. Harun Siddharth, you might know, um, and this uh, thesis, uh, the student is called quite famous celebrity, Hamza Zotziz, um, and it's actually on the uh, scientific uh, miracles of the Quran. Um, so, the, uh, I mean, this is basically my kind of interaction. Um, I, I'm, I'm answering fatwas. I'm, I'm quite well known now in medical fatwas. Um, I teach for Al Balagh as well in some of their courses. Uh, one of the things that I realized, I'm finishing now, one of the things that I realized very quickly is that the ulama, ulama Muslim scholars, get the science really badly wrong right but the scientists also get the religious bit seriously wrong and therefore what we need is um a multidisciplinary interdisciplinary effort i mean this was one of the critiques of Ziad din sardar of the islamization knowledge project uh, of naqibul attas and ismail raji Farooqi that you know uh, why are we uh, um kind of islamization islamization or Islamizing things which at rock bottom are, uh, comes out from a different, uh, uh, you know, religious milieu uh, and epistemology. We need to develop our own. But we can, I can't become, I, I mean, I, I only have GCSE science, right? I can't become uh, a doctor. Either we need bridge scholars like uh, Mehrun Nisa Suleiman, uh, one of my colleagues says bridge scholars like Dr. Rafaqat, who's an alim as well as a doctor, or we need to work um, in, in groups. And this is something that also, uh, I think in the CIM meeting that you were referring to, Conference uh, Tariq Ramadan uh, mentioned, and he also talks about this in his radical reform. Um, so uh, I think I'll close it there.